Hey, everybody. Welcome to the WP Tonic Podcast, episode 222. We're so happy to have you here, and we are interviewing a great guest today, Dagmar Gattel. We're going to be talking about accelerated mobile pages and other things you need to know to make sure that your inbound marketing is getting you where you want it to. Dagmar, please tell us about yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Dagmar Gattel. I'm originally from Germany. I live now in beautiful Florida. And I do SEO and online marketing since the last six to eight years. But I really love SEO the most because it connects humans with the search. And that's where I have my fun to help entrepreneurs who want to build their authority globally. Excellent. Thank you. And now my co-host, Jonathan Denwood, please introduce yourself. Oh, you did a fantastic intro there, Kim. Yes, folks, Kim's um, back from uh, her bad cold. Um, about me, um, I'm the founder of WP Tonic. We're a maintenance support company. We only support WordPress. It's our passion. And we talk a lot about it, don't we, Kim? So yes, back to you, Kim. And I'm Kim Schivler. I am a communications instructor and strategist who also focuses on taking your technology and using it to reach your audience, particularly with membership websites and online courses. And let's get started. So Dagmar, this kind of came about, uh, Dagmar and I are, are close friends when you were telling me about the importance of the Google accelerated mobile pages. And I said, okay, tell me more, because I'm like her worst nightmare when it comes to actual <laughs> SEO folks. That's true. I just, dip, I just do what I want. <clears throat> so tell us a little bit about what that means and why it's important. Okay, let me just tell a little story wh why I got to this point that I really studying it, right? So I have many clients and they love to use images and they are not hot to create content. So I, I really try hard that they use, and Kim teaches us, use the, same, uh, use the right size and um, not uploading whatever, five megabytes to the website. But the challenge is really you can work your butt off and it's still not right. It still doesn't get you there. It's still the load time is huge. And then when you do the, the page speeder check with Google, you still have all these errors. So thinking about the user experience and thinking about performance, I thought, what else can we do, right? What, what is totally easy for my client to do, or perhaps they don't have to touch anything, and we just can use the plugin. So that's really what I, where I started searching with. And then I came to the AMP, the, to the accelerated mobile pages. And first, as I found it, it's, it's a coding language, right? It's an advanced coding language where to our additional code on the website, to the templates and the plugins, now we have the AMP code. But really what it is, it's a miracle. And whenever I install it on the website, then when you go and search for it, the site, it comes up like, like a rocket. Like it's, un, it's, if, it's like, for me, it's a new wonder on the internet. It's unbelievable how fast the site now is where before we tried to optimize the image, do the caching, do the CSS and HTML and JavaScript and everything. It was like this painful work to make a site speedier. And now with the, excuse me, <coughs> with the AMP, it's you install the plugin and that's it. And so is that making, <clears throat> excuse me, is that making both your, desktop site and your mobile site faster or is this just for no, mobile it's just for mobile amp accelerated mobile pages mm -hmm. it's only about mobile because having in mind that in 2018 we will have mobile index first where the search engines first go into the mobile version look for performance which is mostly load time right they look for performance they look for ux user experience and look for content and that's how your keywords will be ranked from next year on so um, the assumption is in the next, I, I just would say, two to five years, it's totally moving over to mobile and you will have a very small portion of your traffic coming in through the desktop. You will have perhaps 85% coming in through mobile. Excellent. And so you said this is a plugin. Mm -hmm. 
what's the name of the plugin and tell us a little bit about what we would need to do to configure it on our site. Believe it or not, it's, it's so easy to install it. It's a, it takes a little bit more thought to configure it, but let me, I have notes, left printer has notes for everything. So give me a second to get there. And then I tell you what plugin it is. And since a lot of our listeners, like us, are WordPress people, they're going to be definitely interested in the, the name of that plugin. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say there are three main plugins which I'm testing right now, right? So I'm a practitioner, I'm not an expert in AMP, I'm just getting my feet wet, but I'm so excited and my clients are so excited because it's like, the speed. So one of the plugins I tested and so far I found it pretty good. It's AMP by automatic and the automatic is double T. Right. And automatic is the company that manages WordPress, the WordPress foundation, wordpress.com, all of that. I see Snow White has just joined us. <laughs> Which is okay. We allow cats hey, on this podcast. Snow White is sick today, so oh. I cannot not take care of her. So the second one, which I'm testing right now, is AMP for WP, and is by Emmett Kaludi. So AMP for WP, mm -hmm. and Emmett A H M E D mm -hmm. Kaludi is K A L U D I. We can find that. Thank mm -hmm. you. And the third one, and I did not test that yet, is better AMP. Is WordPress complete AMP by Better Studio? All right. And then from the first two that you have tested, the one by Automatic and then the, the other one, what would you say the pros and the cons of the two of those are? Is there a big difference? No. So, so far, and... Um, I'm not the best person to ask about the big difference because it's depending on the themes and the plugins and the mm -hmm. style you use, right? So I use mostly Divi. So for Divi, it did not make a big difference. But depending on if you have a lot of customization, if you have logos and designs and a lot of images, it for sure will make a difference. So I would highly recommend what I learned from Kim to do a test site first and to look at it on the test side because it could break and it could screw up your design and your style. Okay, that's always good to know. And I think, Jonathan, we would, uh, you would agree that testing things on a test site, not your live environment, is a really good idea. Just a little bit. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't follow my own advice. <laughs> I have a tendency like the shoemaker of holes in my shoes. I, uh, I resist it now. Uh, I really, I've been a lot better, Kim. I've been a lot better. <clears throat> so you, so you really got to, I understand now why my clients do it. Um, even though they get told off by some, in the most nicest way. It's so tempting, Kim, isn't it? It's tempting to just push that update button and, and uh, I screwed up several sites and many a time. So I now have a staging site and uh, I push yeah. that staging button first. And then it's, we like the, it's like the devil's itch, isn't it? <laughs> just, can't, just can't resist it. You just got to put it out. And I, I'm a hyper tidy person. So um, if I see a plugin not updated or anything not right, it's got to be dealt with straight then. Right then. <laughs> straight away. Straight away. Yeah. Well, I get that. Now, Dad, I really appreciated that feedback, Daggy, on um, it depends on the theme and the plugins. Are there any specific conflicts you have found with these for no. people? Not conflicts, but the other thing what we want to have in mind, right? And I'm just saying in my German English, and please you add to it what I'm missing. So the AMP is an advanced coding, and it really creates separate pages, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it creates a kind of a separate version of your site for mobile compared to desktop. So what you want to have in mind, if it does do this, you need to make sure for, from an SEO perspective, your matters are displayed in the AMP. And for that, Yoast has a plugin 
and it's clue, right? Like the stick, mm -hmm. C-L-U-E, clue for Yoast, SEO, and AMP. And you want to install this because you really want to make sure that not only the, the pages are faster, but also they still stay indexed and ranked, right? And then the other thing is having in mind, because it's kind of um, a second version of your pages and it's so much more simpler, right? So you normally, you won't find um, the header on top. You won't find sliders on top. It's just simple. So you, you have the headline, you have the text, you have images within the text, but you don't have all the fancy, fancy stuff we have on a desktop. So because of that, with the use plugin and with the, um, the AMP plugin, you can at least uh, create the header font, the colors, and uh, you can create the text colors. So you, really, you can think about how do you want, you, you, in, um, install it and look at it. How do you want to have the display of the AMP pages? So that's what I highly recommend. See it as an addition to your website. Excellent. And yes, from a, from a technical perspective, they actually are a simplified HTML is really what you're looking at. So it is a separate page. It's a simplified HTML. Uh, we'll add some other links in the show notes to more technical detailed information on what really goes on behind the scenes for those of you who are interested. Now, what interested me with this is that it is, it is a second site. And in 2015 or 2016, when Google really was wanting, you know, going crazy over the responsive themes, at the time they were discouraging having a separate optimized site. All right. What's changed there? So, and I had a client who came with me at the beginning of the year, right? And he had a separate mobile site compared to his real website. So the separate mobile site so far, what I see that the benefit is now with the AMP, it, it wa had a to totally different display. It was an interruption of credibility and trust when you look at it from the mobile perspective or from the desktop perspective. So the mobile side was really all about making it very simple in mobile, but, but limited in is two buttons, right? Was mostly buttons where you could click on. So now really it is your website. It is, you still have your branding, perhaps limited, but you still have your branding. So you, you, ha you can have one cent throughout your online presence, where no matter if people go to your website, to your social media, to your mobile version of your site, they still will see the same cent there. And then uh, what I see, the biggest benefit is really with the AMP, it's reliable, right? So sometimes with, with just mobile responsive sites, they're not reliable or they, they can have broken elements in it. With the AMP, because the simplicity of it, it, it really has an, a structure which has a consistency and it's not... It's not showing elements who don't belong there. So it's interesting. It, it looks like it has its own artificial intelligence. It will pull in, because I tested it, it will pull in the elements, what it finds it's important for mobile. Isn't that amazing? Interesting. All right. So it, it, it restructures what you see on desktop and what you see on the mobile responsive side without AMP mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. different as what you see in AMP. So it cleans up the site, kind of. Oh, that's interesting. Now, what about video? Will you still not, see video? I did not test video yet. Like, <clears> I know with Divi, we have the option to embed it or to um, have the URL right there. My experience with uh, Divi, if I have the URL right there, it breaks sometimes that the video doesn't come up. So I normally embed it, but I did not test video yet. Okay, so that was just your regular experience with the theme mm -hmm. was that it was better to embed it. Yes. Okay. Excellent. That definitely answers most of my questions about our accelerated mobile pages. And we will make sure that we get all the links to these plugins. And I had read 
uh, one thing on the glue for Yoast. So I just wanted to see if you had any, um, it sounded like in his article that it, that one did not take a lot more configuration. You just kind of put it in and boom, right. it would it's, allow you to make sure the metas were there. Right. So first you can, first you define for what do you want to use AMP mostly, right? And mostly like if you have a rela- regular vex- website, it's for articles or blog posts. So you would define it for, for what type of pages do you want to use it? And then the next step is like with the header colors, the, the font colors, the regular text colors, and things like that. But may I add something from an SEO perspective? Please. The benefits of AMP. So the benefits of AMP first is when it comes up in the search, it will come up with the green AMP symbol, right? So this for sure will be more and more in the future a trust symbol. And it will be similar what I read, similar scene as the HTTPS, the log. Mm-hmm. So some more trust symbols the site has, right? So better it will be in ranking without a question. So, so faster a site is, it will be, it's already a ranking factor, but it will be a huge ranking factor with mobile index first. So it only has benefits to put a little time and effort in installing the plugins and testing it on the test side and everything it will have a ranking uh, effect. And so far I have two websites who performed like 15% better after I installed the AMP. And they had the challenge before, they had a lot of images and they just, they were so slow. And we tried everything to, um, to um, what's the word for that? What to do with the image comp- compress? To, and optimize them. Mm, and optimize yeah. them, but still they just had so many, right? Mm-hmm. So now with AMP, it's unbelievable how this result changed, what we got with that. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And any, um, I know one of the things I love with Dugmore is she tests everything. She's very left-brained. She tests and tests and tests. She tries and tests. So I always know when she's telling me something, she's really getting numbers. So like you said, a a 15% increase. And what it sounded like, I just wanted to confirm It wasn't just that they're looking for a faster responsive site. You actually, when it can detect those accelerated mobile pages in the search, you will get a little green AMP in the actual listing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's part of your social proof, I guess, as as a trust symbol. mm -hmm. It's a trust symbol, right? And not only that... um, I don't know if you had the chance to see the AMP pages. So the AMP pages, they look a little bit like news pages, right? So they're they're very limited to um, what they show, but they show the core of a site. They show the core of content where normally you have the banner, you have all these distracting elements in it, which takes away from um, user experience and content. Right, so a lot of times when I see the websites, the user experience, it's not what they have in mind when they created it, it's more their own taste. So now with AMP, it really minimizes it in in such a compact way that it's all about user experience and then finding the relevant content, which is awesome because it's a great tool. It, It makes, it takes away the, the pressure of us that we need to figure out what is it, what um, the searcher wants to see. And then the other thing, what I love, like in Google Analytics, you can integrate that with the AMP, right? So now you understand much more the user behavior because it's so simple. The AMP pages are so simple. So you have less elements. So it's clearly, you, you can see, um, where do they go? What are they most interested in? Where before on the desktop, the desktop is huge. You could test everything. So desktop, you test one element at a time, but perhaps it takes you a while with A and B split testing. But now with AMP, the, the data you get out of that is so much more, so, so much more impactful. Right. Thank you so much. Everybody, we are at our break. I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Jonathan. 
Oh, hi there, folks. So we're going to go for a break. It's been a fascinating conversation about these pages that Google are planning to dominate the mobile sector with. Um, we're all um, going to be fired you know we're not needed anymore as designers now i'm only kidding folks so we're going to go for our break and we're going to come back and we're going to learn some more about that and seo and a lot of other things back in a moment folks we're coming back it's been a fascinating show kim's back recovered from the black death it's firing <laughs> two shots. I'm, I'm going to let you take over again, Kim, and then I'm going to butt in later on with a, my own question. Fire away, Kim. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, back from the Black Death. I'm so grateful for that. Uh, well, I love the, the idea, actually. Something you said, Jonathan, tied into Dagmar of, well, does that mean, you know, are we joking that we really don't need designers? But... I think in more we do need designers because it's it's really pushing us to the importance is user experience, as you pointed out. Mm -hmm. And designing a good user experience is definitely important and definitely a design piece. It means it's taking us away, though, from maybe these giganto hero images across everything, right? Right. So does that, uh, will it remove those if you're on the mobile? So you need to be building with that in mind or how does that work it's may i say it's different we need a different type of designer right mm -hmm. but yesterday i worked on a website with a client from south florida and her designer designed her menu bar so her menu bar were, normally is a button it it had images in it right the whole menu bar was images the whole blog category were images the site broke Whenever we touched it, whenever we, we installed a new plugin, the site broke, right? So the new designer is not about making it pretty. The new designer is about making it perform better, getting better conversions with the content we put out there and the content needs to fit the design we put out there. Because a lot of times what I see, the images and the headers and the text and the bullet point have nothing to do with each other. And there is no flow. There, there is no scent. And the, the, in the future, because of the semantic search, because of the artificial intelligence of the search engines, which does not stop with the keyword at all, right? So more and more the designer of a site needs to be partial a brand expert, needs to be partial um, UX a practitioner, right? So it, it, it has to be a much more complex knowledge as just perhaps years ago where it was about designing a, um, a graphic element or, or um, structuring a website by putting in the, the text and the images and the videos. It sounds to me, I, I liken it to back when, when we really, when I was first developing websites back in the, the mid 90s and trying to get through to people that you were not developing print. Mm -hmm. you know, so you would work with designers who were used to building these beautiful brochures and manuals and all and then you know wanting to put that on the web particularly back in the dial-up days which were slower than even phones you just couldn't do it and it seems like maybe we're going back to some of that wanting to get rid of some of the really bloated stuff that might look nice but maybe isn't actually um, serving us particularly in mobile and from what I have heard, we're going to, I'm hoping, ha have someone on who is an expert on conversions, that frequently the, the big images and stuff really aren't helping us at conversions either, even though we want to think they are. <clears throat> I can see that because at the end, if, if you open a mobile site, right, without AMP, if you would open a mobile site and you have this huge bloated image coming up first and you have to scroll down to find the core, perhaps people with the attention span of a goldfish, they're already gone. 
<laughs> and more and more of us have attention spans of goldfish these oh, days. It's, the thing, not only that, right? Think about I'm so much in areas where the where I don't have the perfect internet connection. Yeah. So then I'm waiting forever for this huge image to load, and I just want to have one detail of what I was searching for. I get impatient. So I think that we have to come back to, and that's really what I love about SEO. It goes back to the core again, because the direction is voice search, right? So we, we're going back from people searching for whole sentences into people say very, in sh very short two or three words. What do they want? So how we communicate uh, on our mobile devices is so much different as how we communicated on the desktops two years ago or three years ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, and even, I think even now, when we're looking for something on a desktop, we're likely to be looking for something different than mobile. In the sense of, if I want to look up on the desktop, I might do some deep research where mm -hmm. I'm actually going to go really want to read something, find big documents, <clears throat> you know, for example, maybe a training piece that I want to learn. Whereas if I'm looking up a restaurant because I'm out, I either want the directions there, maybe a quick menu, and what's their phone number? You know, I'm not looking to dig into some of these other things necessarily. Right. So what you just described, there's a difference between a one-click search and a multiple search, right? So the mobile is normally the one-click search. I search for one thing. I search mm -hmm. for a restaurant phone number, a menu, or who can provide me what services. Where on the desktop, it's normally a multiple search, right? It's normally up to three searches where you start with one search term and then depending on what results you get, you go deeper into it. When mobile, you normally never go deeper. That makes perfect sense. Because I, I definitely know for me when I'm out and about, if I'm searching for something, it's usually a phone number or I'm lost and I need to know how to get there. <laughs> That's my, that's my norm, except for when we're watching TV and I have to look up something in IMDb because I, I just think that, you know, I recognized an actor and Michael and I play this game where we see who can, who can pick out uh, people who are the most obscure from, from old movies. But other than that, I'm really just looking for uh, uh, numbers and things like that when I want to find somebody. So... Jonathan, do you have some AMP questions too before we go into some more just general SEO stuff for Daggy? Not really. It's, I mean, it's something <laughs> that I'm just opened a, a chest of research that I'm going to have to do the next <laughs> couple of months. Thank you so much. But uh, You're um, welcome. Thank you. Um, but I, I think it's fascinating that Google's going down this path um, and the real emphasis on mobile is, you know, so evident by that move. Um, I just got a general, this just do a bit of general SEO. Um, so what are some of the basic things that you regularly see people still doing wrong? You know, people like Kim that, you know, just won't do it, you know. What are, so, <laughs> sorry, Kim, I, okay. I, to, I, now, to, I think no. the one thing, and Kim doesn't do that, the one thing people do, they write content for themselves, and not for what people search for. And that's, that's the, most, the most thing what I see. They have hundreds and hundreds of pages where they have beautiful, beautiful content written for people if they would land on the site. But they are missing the, the, they're missing the bridge, the SEO bridge, right? They're missing the keyword that they connect what people search for to bring them to the site and then to bring them down to, okay, you search for this, but in reality, you really need this. So they're missing the bridge, meaning that their websites stay invisible, they stay unknown, they have no reach, they have no recognition, they get frustrated about that. So by the time they come to me and they created all this content, going back and to re-optimize the content is sometimes hard for them because their ego comes in the way, Right. So it's really good and what helps me a lot and what I help my clients with focusing on if you want to create an impact, if you want to make a difference in your clients' lives with the services you offer or your products, 
How can you do this? What are the problems they're dealing with? How can your solution help them? And then it becomes easier for them to integrate keywords, related keywords, semantics, SEO, right? Um, like for example, and it's such a simple example, but I love it. So if you think about cars, right? C-A-R-S. So every body of us thinks perhaps of something different. So they are, they are car dealers and they use the word cars. And then also there is the movie cars from Disney. And there is an organization which is C-A-R-S, which cars, they write it in the same way and has nothing to do with cars at all. So the, there is now the artificial intelligence that the search engines understand. If you use words like buy and sell or car types or Ford, that's a car dealer. Or the movie, you have the actors, you, you have um, the, um, the content of the movie, right? So they understand it's the movie and then whatever the organization um, is relevant to. So there, there is the artificial intelligence. So for us, compared to a few years ago, it's much easier to create great content without using a keyword redundantly, which we shouldn't do at all. But we still need to have a keyword or a word combination to build the bridge from what people search for to how we can help them. And that's what I see many, many people missing. They don't have the bridge. Uh, I totally, because uh, I used to be one of them, and I've learned, the, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've learned in a very hard, bitter way that you've got to do exactly what you've just said. Um, a question that's kind of linked to this, you know, um, I'm a great connoisseur of Brian Dean's material. Um, he's a quite famous SEO person. I'm sure you've heard of him. Mm -hmm. And his um, skyscraper uh, mm -hmm. system, you know, basically look at the competition, um, look at something, um, look at the competition. It, it gets a little bit tricky, though, doesn't it? Especially if you're, le if you're a learner because... You, yes. need to, you need to look at something that your competitors have done that you could produce that's better, but it's got to be something that's getting a reasonable amount of traffic to make the effort worthwhile, but not so competitive that you couldn't um, compete. Have you got, um, A, do you agree with Brian Brian's outlook there? And secondly, have you got any tips about how you tools or how you select something that you're going to produce that's going to be better than the competition okay so i'm i'm familiar with brian and i know his sky sky um scraper. skyscraper mm -hmm, skyscraper so the, what i see and what you just referred to if you're familiar with seo and if you understand his process it works very well for you if you're a beginner right it could be just because you don't have the base understanding that you implement it not in the best way for you. So for beginners, I would recommend they need to have a tool. They need to do keyword research, right? And whatever, if they Google keyword research tools, they're endless on the market. So you need to have a keyword research tool and you need first to figure out what is it you want to be found for to understand who is your competitor in this area, right? Because sometimes I have clients and they think what their competitor is and they know everything about these competitive websites, but in reality, their niche is totally different. Their niche is not what they thought in the first place. So first you need to figure out what is your real niche? What is it where your services provide a solution where you can create content? And then second, um, I would look who's ranked number one for this uh, specific niche and then go in and see why are they ranked? Uh, do they have images? What is their social media activity? Do they use videos? What type of content do they use? How do they approach the content? How do they structure the content? So for a beginner, I would suggest to them that they do it step by step. Yeah, I think that's a, also a great point. Well, we're coming to the end of the podcast 
podcast part of the show, folks. Kim's done an excellent job. We're going to continue the discussion afterwards, which you'll be able to find on the website, at the WP Tonic website, and on the YouTube channel. That's getting more and more popular. Um, probably we will have a, chat, a further chat for 10 to 15 minutes all about SEO. So we're coming to the end of the actual podcast. So, um, Damia, how can people find more about you, your services, and what you're interested in? Okay. So the best way to go to my website, dagmargatel.com. It's D-A-G-M-A-R. G-A-T-E-L-L.com or they just can email me at SEO at and then my website duckmarketel.com or just give me a call at 321-209-0208. Oh, that's great. And I've, I've really enjoyed the conversation. Kim, how can people find more about you, Kim, my beloved co-host? You can find me on Twitter at Kim Shivler. You can find me at kimshivler.com and, of course, whitegloveweptraining.com and reach out i've been doing a lot more tweeting lately so find me there i'm the queen of twitter um and how can people find me it's quite easy folks um my name's pretty um jonathan denwood you can find that in search and it all come up all by history all by bad history by bad boy stuff and uh, or you could uh, twitter me at jonathan denwood or you could just email me at jonathan at wp hyphen tonic.com and i do answer any questions or any comments or suggestions about people that should come on you would like to come on the show any feedback we get is great and just to finish off folks if you can go to itunes put in search wp tonic and then give us a review that would be really handy um, because it really does help the show so we're going to wrap up for the um, podcast part but remember there's bonus content on the youtube channel which you can also see on the website be back next week for another fantastic interview with a web professional um or a wordpress junkie be back <laughs> next week bye thank you for having me oh you're welcome thank you for being on with us so <clears throat> I loved the way you ended it, I think was perfect, Jonathan, for bonus content, because that last piece that you uh, talked about, Dagmar, really, and I, and I know this because I know you and I've watched you work with clients for many years, how, how intricate it is, how it's each piece, right? It's not just <clears throat> see what your competitors are doing and write something else. It's look at who you know making sure you find your niche first of all making sure that then who is that other competitor and where are they being ranked for and why and that it's really an education you need to take for yourself that goes much deeper than what i hear a lot of people talk about seo when really they maybe just are talking about keywords oh absolutely like think about how did they do in the old days right they, they sent spies to the local companies and saw how did they set up their store? What do they have? What are the elements? So that's the same what we do now. It's, it's, not, just, it's just, not just data. It's, it's much more to what is the feeling like for conversions? I, I can so see it. The wording is so important. What is the feeling the words they use convert, right? So what, what I told you about, um, one of my clients, very interesting, his, his traffic is very targeted, totally. Like he has not a huge amount of traffic, but I brought him to the point, he has two to three inquiries a day, a day. And it, it was so funny from what his writer said, he should have in the call to action box. Let's, get, let's start planning to what we changed it to, uh, build your own public lobby, right? It, it made a huge difference. And before we didn't have a form in the sidebar, all his competitors have a form in the sidebar. Now we have the form in the sidebar. Now we get the conversions and we did not change the content. So it, it's, you really want to look at it from a bird's eye perspective, right? And really analyze who they are and not just looking at the keywords. But um, I totally agree with you there, um, Demo. But do you think, if you're not getting a certain traffic level 
whatever you do, do you do you agree with me or not? I, I'm fascinated to get your point of view on this. If you haven't got a certain traffic level, it's really hard, whatever you do, to have any effect. Would you agree with that or no, not? No, no. I, I would have believed that before. This year I do endless testing because I promised myself, I, I read the book Hassel from Neil Patel and he said I should do experimenting. And I did not do so much experimenting before, before I built content, 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 backlinks, backlinks, backlinks. So now I, I this year I experiment a lot. And it's unbelievable how the user experience and understanding the user intent and from filling them on the website changes the conversions. It, it's unbelievable because before I thought you need to have at least 10,000 people a month to get conversions, mm -hmm. right? And since I'm doing the testing, I can have two to three conversions a day with 1,000 people a month. And it's not a lot, but it's the right traffic. It's totally the focused traffic where before we just went broader, right? We brought in the people who just look for free information, just look for something similar. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going so specific. It just it takes more time to plan it. It takes more time to do the keyword research because it's not so shallow but so the better i prepare it before and then so more i look how do the competitors on the first page convert not only rank convert how do they convert and then i adapt my client little by little and the results are amazing because they want to make money they don't care if they make money with 1000 people or 10000 people no, it's, it's got no interest at all. You know, it's business, isn't it? But that's yeah. fascinating. Um, you got you just produced even more work for me. There we go. Well, this is getting longer. <laughs> actually, <laughs> no life at all. I've got no life now. Uh, um, so, uh, um, do you know what I learned, Jonathan? What was that? And you will enjoy that because you're European. At least I say you're European, uh, like me. Well, I still want us to be European. So I don't want us to get divorced. So, <laughs> do you know what? I'm, my, my brain was so wired to working hard, working hard, doing more, doing all the tasks, doing more, doing more. Now, since I read the book from Neil with Hassel, I'm totally focusing on how can I move more, right? How can I create a bigger movement for my clients without working harder? without working my butt off, without doing everything and not stopping and thinking, what do I need to create this movement? And he says, experimenting, storytelling, and pitching helps to create a movement. And I'm, I'm testing this. Like Kim says, I normally test everything. And it's very interesting because it works. It works well. I work less, but I have much more results. I have much more success now. Oh, right. So that, that's my reading list as well. <laughs> 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 um, you also have to make sure <clears throat> you also have to make sure your, your developers that work for you are, are uh, cluing into these mobile pages and new things too, Jonathan. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll <clears throat> have to. I'm, I'm sure John, John Locke, um, who helps me out on some of the bigger jobs, um, is reasonably queued up. Um, but yes, you're totally right. I think another thing um, that, you know, um, I forgot the name of Yoast, you know, it's a great plugin. But um, I find with um, a lot of people, they get green, green dot obsessed, you know, they got, they got, yeah, <laughs> they, that's uh, and that can lead to a lot of problems. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Because it's an illusion, right? People think it's SEO. It's not SEO. It's just keyword placement. That's all what it is. So it doesn't say you will be ranked. It doesn't say you, you did a great job. It just says you have the keywords in the, in the minimum placements. Is that minimum placements? In the required placements or whatever. So people... They, they come, a lot of people come to me, they don't do keyword research, they just pop in whatever focus keyword they think it is, and then they have all green, and then I look at it and say, that's nothing. There's no demand out there. There's not a keyword at all. A keyword comes from consistent search, not from one search a month thing. So yeah, I, 
I, I'm with you. It's, it's an illusion that people think this is SEO. It's not SEO. No, but it's understandable because <coughs> it's a great feedback loop, isn't it? It's, um, it's, it's almost a pure behavioral, come, almost comes from game theory. You know, you, you get this instant, you know, get the green dot and you get an instant feedback, can't you? Um, it's like a school, you have an A grade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I also, because um, I did an article myself um and um, I did the keyword research because um, obviously <clears throat> with WP Tonic, um, the, the actual audience that listens to the actual podcast, I would imagine, is designers, developers, people seeking advice, um, DIY um, people that are looking to build a business through WordPress. But my actual customer base are not really those people um so um the actual podcast is more about building um um, looking for the right word um building um um i'm I'm losing my plot here a little bit folks um you know building yeah, reputation maybe that you that you are interested in the WordPress community, and you are. I hate the term of kind of fault leader um, in the community to some degree, um, but the actual customer base. So I, I'm now writing the articles more to my customer base, which is business to business and the problems that they're seeking. So I did some research on an article. Um, and I looked at the competition and I wrote something better based on Brian's Dean and I published it. And what the amazing thing is, um, I, u- I utilised one of the tools that you say there's quite a few of. And I got, a, in less than a week, I was um, in the middle. I was in the top three of the search for that particular term. So if you do do the research and you do write something reasonably well you can get a result quite quickly can't you um what you just said just you can just have in mind there's a temporary ranking for fresh content oh you're not gonna upset me now are you (laughs) no (laughs) so what you what you just said right you can be in the top three within a short period of time and if you write a Google Plus post, you will be ranked immediately on the first page. Just have in mind, it can be temporary ranked, right? Yeah. So for middle and long-term ranking, what, what you did with your post, you still need to have in mind like internal linking, backlink, social media sharing. It's not a one-time thing, oh. right? It's the beginning what you did. It's not the end. Oh, well, that blew my bubble, folks. But there we go. <laughs> That's good to know. I don't understand what you're saying. No, I don't. So don't worry. Uh, um, no, you just added some more work to the list. Uh, um, but it's been a fascinating conversation. I think you brought up a load of um, different things that um, people need to understand and look at um obviously i've asked you how people can get hold of you before yeah. um, may i say one thing jonathan yeah sure so what i experienced in the last years is people look at a website as a one-time thing yeah. and not as building their business mm-hmm. so it's very important that more and more the internet is not going away right so there is a mindset shift needed that we look at the website as our baby, as our business we want to grow and not trying to find tricks or tactics or quick things to put it up there and then to leave it alone because then it, like, it will die. So it, it's really shifting this mindset from looking at it as a tool compared to something alive. A website is something alive. I, I think that's it. Thank you for saying that, because I, I totally agree with it. I think I think it's um, having structure 
um, hiring somebody like you to maybe either run everything or provide some structure about what needs to be done because it it's so easy like you said in your previous remarks in the interview to do a lot of stuff but it's not actually um, moving you forward to where you want to get to basically and it's finding like you mentioned Patel's book it's really doing the things that will get the biggest return that are the important things to do um but it's some it's not easy without experience or study to know what are those key factors that you should be concentrating on well we did ask you know at the end of the podcast about how people could get hold of you would you like to repeat that again at sure. the end yeah would be my pleasure. They can find me on my website, dagmargatel.com, D-A-G-M-A-R-G-A-T-E-L-L.com. Or they can send me an email at seo at and then dagmargatel.com or give me a call at 321-209-0208. Oh, that's great. And thank you for being our guest. It's been fantastic. Oh, so I love that- it. Well, thanks. So that's the end of our um, YouTube Facebook content. And please join us next Wednesday where we're going to have either an expert on online marketing or social media or a WordPress junkie or somebody, a key member of the WordPress community for a one-to-one interview. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye. Bye. Bye.